Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome to another online super tournament. This time it's Lindores Abbey Rapid Challenges 2020. Uh, this is 12 players uh, tournament, only super grandmasters. Uh, here is the list if you are interested. So we have Magnus Carlsen, Ding Liren, Alexander Grishuk, Levon Aronian, Wesley So, Jan Krzysztof Duda, Sergei Karyakin, Hikaru Nakamura, Wei Yi, Alireza Firuja, Yu Yang Yi and Daniel Dubov. So uh, only top players and um, now about Lindores Abbey. This is 800 years old Abbey in Scotland um, and the monks among other activities of course uh, played chess as well that's the i don't know it's marketing story or not uh, but the tournament was held in 2019 uh, not online uh, just real tournament and magnus carlsen dominated that tournament uh, if you are interested you can check it as well uh, more important this is the second event of the magnus carlsen tour because he organized a series of events um, and it has this one has one hundred fifty thousand dollars prize fund uh, forty five thousand uh, dollars goes for the first place um, and the winner also is qualifies for the three hundred thousand grand final and it's gonna be played in August and a bit about the rules here so uh, we have the first stage now today uh, and the players play each other so uh, it's round robin uh, and then the top eight players goes to the second stage so uh, four players not gonna qualify of course um, and the time control 15 minutes uh, plus 10 second incrementation so that's rapid time control uh, and today i would like to show you one of the games from the from the round one magnus carlsen number one in the world uh, triple world champion um, 2881 this is his ranking in rapid chess and he's gonna play as white and his opponent alexander grishuk 2784 this is his rapid ranking and that means he's number seven in the world and he's gonna play as black so uh, about Magnus Carlsen and Alexander Grishuk encounter so far a standard time control Magnus Carlsen won six time and lost one game and they had nine draws but in rapid and blitzes there is um, a different score 39 wins by Magnus Carlsen and 23 wins by Alexander Grishuk so definitely more chances in the shorter time control uh, as Magnus Carlsen cannot be so precise like in the, the standard time control and they had also 22 draws so uh, without further ado let's see what happened on the board Magnus Carlsen opens with e4 and Grishuk answer with e5 we have knight on f3 knight on c6 bishop b5 Rui Lopez on the board knight on f6 so Berlin defense and now d3 bishop c5 and now now, uh, instead of playing c3, like uh, for example Alireza Firuzia yesterday, then we have bishop on c6. Uh, exchange variation, d takes on c6, and now uh, the main line would be knight on d2, okay? And after castle followed by knight on c4. So that's the spot for the knight, putting the pressure uh, on e5. So uh, this is the idea. However, Magnus goes for different plan, knight on c3. Uh, we have castle by Grishuk and now bishop e3 challenging this bishop on the uh, very, very nice diagonal. So bishop retreat to d6. Uh, and here the main move again is h3, taking away the, the square g4 from, for example, from the bishop. So bishop can't pin, but also the knight couldn't come uh, and harass the bishop. But Magnus decide to play bishop on g5 first. Uh, and now we have queen on e7. Uh, and now h3, uh, rook on e8, and here h3 was not only controlling g4, but also preparing g4. So Magnus goes for uh, for attack on the king's position, and he did it a couple of times last days. So it's very interesting how uh, he gonna proceed this attack. Uh, 
H6 is recommended by the engine, but Alexander Grishchuk probably didn't believe that after bishop on e3, uh, g5 wouldn't be a troubles. Definitely that would be a troubles. So he played queen on e6. He has a different plan for defense. Uh, and after knight on h4, he played knight on d7. So um, he unpinned the, the knight. Knight now moves. And now he's gonna relocate the knight to c5. Uh, we have knight on f5 by Magnus Carlsen, very very nice outpost, of course g6 uh, shouldn't be played because knight on h6 and white's gonna play on the dark squares, uh, very dangerous position. So uh, knight on c5 as planned, but this knight actually uh, is not really great here. Uh, it can't really do anything as this pawn structure is very very strong here. Uh, we have h4, so Magnus Carlsen continue to push his his uh, h pawn uh, as he did, you know, a couple of times this year. So it's very impressive and uh, it's very interesting how he's gonna do it this time again. Uh, we have bishop on f8 uh, by Grishuk, so always retreat the bishop to f8, very good move. And now h5, still following, and now f6 by Grishuk. So he creates some uh, very strong pawn structure, which shouldn't be easy to crack. Uh, but it's, you know, against Magnus Carlsen, so everything can happen. Bishop now retreats to uh, e3. And now we have queen on f7. Uh, and now f4, so continuing the attack, uh, we have e takes on f4, bishop takes on f4, uh, and now uh, what to play as black? Uh, doing anything on the position on the king sides would be probably a suicide, so uh, Grishuk waits there uh, and he tries his chances on the queen side. So we have b5. Uh, queen on f3 bringing another attacker and now knight on e6 attacking the bishop as bishop plays a very important role in this attack. Uh, we have bishop on e3, so retreating and still staying on this diagonal. Uh, and now bishop on b7. So putting the bishop on this diagonal uh, may be slightly uncomfortable, but not now. Definitely uh, moves like e5 to crack the position even more would not be possible. But this is not the plan of Magnus Carlsen. He castle first um, and after b4, uh, knight on a4 and c5, uh, he plays place h6 so here is his idea and now look at this position how the attacks goes it's very very often that he attacks with the pawn h6 but what next it's not so easy but let's see the, the position what is going on here we have c5 pawn attack twice and it's defended twice as well uh, and the pawn on g7 is also attacked twice and defended by the minor pieces also twice um, the queen doesn't matter in this case because, you know, it's attacked by the pawn and the minor piece. So uh, Grishuk don't want to uh, lose the pawn and he played g6. The problem is Magnus goes to g7 anyway. So we have knight on g7. Uh, and now the rook is under attack. And if you want to move the rook, you can, but that is the problem. Now uh, Magnus just gonna exchange everything, uh, win the pawn, and this position is just better for white. It's much better for white extra pawn uh, but also it's very very strong center difficult to to you know to find any ideas here yes black can take the pawn but it doesn't really matter because uh, white gonna be definitely more dangerous uh, on the king side uh, so here we have bishop on g7 uh, h takes on g7 and now again what to play would you like to take the pawn uh, your pawn is still hanging. So we have c4 by Grishuk uh, and now knight on c5. And keep in mind that Grishuk is in the huge time trouble. So uh, he used all 15 minutes for the moves and now he just, you know, has 10 seconds incrementation per move. So that's all his time. And that's, he has to calculate and make the decision very, very fast. Uh, B3 would be interesting uh, option with the idea, of course, taking uh, on A2, but uh, it would not work. A takes on B3, and now after exchanging the pieces, Bishop on C5, C takes on B3, uh, Bishop F8 is coming anyway, uh, B takes on C2, Rook D2, and uh, White would have very interesting attack uh, here, or even some mating ideas with the sacrifice on H7, uh, which I will show you just in a while. 
so um, knight on c5 was played by Grishuk anyway, and now we have bishop on c5. So bishop uh, is heading to f8 anyway, and also attacking the pawn. What is more important? What would be more important here? Uh, Grishu goes for c takes on d3, c takes on d3, so opens the, the position of the king a bit. And now if queen on g7, he's gonna lose the, the pawn and it's difficult to imagine how he's gonna continue the attack here. So instead he want to play a5. So uh, make the position on the queen side a bit solid and probably make uh, better chances for attack. Uh, and now Magnus plays bishop on f8. Uh, and this is the position from the thumbnail, so uh, very strange. Uh, however, what to play now? Actually, you cannot play anything like b3, because I, as I said, rook on h7 is just winning. Uh, king h7 and uh, you're gonna get the checkmated, okay? Uh, even if you take the, the bishop now, uh, it doesn't work because white just gonna promote, uh, the queen is under attack, so queen takes, and now after rook on h1, this is just crashing. Uh, black can deliver one check, another check, and that's all. The king is very safe on a1, uh, and here you cannot defend, the, that's a mating, checkmate is coming. Uh, the queen also attack on f6, and uh, this position is just hopeless. So, uh, what Grishuk did, he made the best decision he could and he take rook on f8 and g takes on f8 with promotion to the queen. Uh, we have rook on f8, king b1, defending a2 and moving the king to the safety uh, and now queen d7. Uh, very nice move uh, from here, queen uh, looking at g4 uh, and also on d4. So this centralizing move is uh, possible and also uh, looking at a4. So the pawn can be defended and safe on a4. So uh, really nice move by uh, Alexander Grishuk, we have rook on c1, so moving the rook to the semi-open file, and now a4. Queen e3, controlling um, d4 now, so any jumps with the queen are not possible, and now rook on f7 by Grishuk, and rook on c4, harassing the pawns now. Uh, so as you see, the pawn is defended now, so we have b3, a3, uh, and here uh, Grishuk decided that he want to exchange some pieces and maybe create some complications. Uh, and as you see, this pawn uh, is defended by the queen, but he decided to exchange the pawn. So we have queen on g4, uh, rook on a4, and this is critical position of the game. But how would you continue the game as white? What plan would you have? Uh, what you need to do to make the things easier. So uh, Magnus Carlsen got the idea to exchange the rooks. If he exchange the rooks, uh, then he gonna, you know, coordinate queen with the with the rook much easier uh, than Grishu could coordinate the, the queen and the bishop, which is very, very difficult. And that's gonna happen in the game. So the plan is to move the rook to d4 and exchange the rooks, okay? And that's, that is the plan. So what black could play, this is the, the last chance for Alexander Grishuk, uh, in my opinion. And now it's c5. This is what he should play. Control d4. And now, yes, he gives this, this pawn, but can it be taken? Uh, after rook on d7, that would be very subtle uh, trap here. Uh, rook on c5 and now rook d3 and what to play as white you can't take the rook because if you take the rook that's gonna be a disaster that's gonna be just a draw rook c8 and now that's just gonna be a draw okay so uh, not this way what white would have to find is rook on c8 with check and after queen on c8 take the rook only now the problem is it's still a problem Queen on c2 with check, and now this is of course forced, so queen c2, b takes on c2, and now white can't take the pawn because we would have this beautiful fork. So that was interesting idea here uh, in this position, and after king on c1, uh, it's unclear 
uh, who's gonna win you know uh, it's very easy you know to make some mistakes here white should win but there are three pawns uh, which can advance and now uh, this pawn is still you know defended so uh, not really easy you know to to bring these pawns you know to um, to the eighth rank but keep in mind that Magnus Carlsen here probably would not go for the pawn on c5. Much uh, safer idea would be just, you know, take the, the pawn on b3 uh, and uh, win, you know, uh, maybe slower but very safe way. Uh, however, uh, here uh, Alexander Grishuk play f5. So he didn't uh, sense that, that this idea can be very dangerous uh, as it's gonna be. So uh, Magnus goes for rook on d four we have f takes on e4 and now rook d8 forcing to exchange the rooks king on g7 is impossible because queen on d4 uh, and now look at this king he can't go anywhere so a rook on f6 is the only move and after rook on f1 a uh, queen on h4 defending the rooks rook d7 gonna kick the king uh, and the rook is pinned so cannot defend uh, so after king on g8 white would win the game win the rook and win the game so not this way uh, alexander grishuk goes for rook on f8 and now just exchange and now king f8 and now you will see how this all works so we have queen on c5 with the attack on the on the c7 pawn king e8 as grishuk of course don't want to stay on the seventh rank uh, we have queen on c7 anyway Way. and now a time to defend the bishop because bishop and the queen are you know uh, not coordinated at, at all so we have bishop on c8 and that's all black can do about coordination of the pieces uh, these pieces just you know staring on each other uh, on this diagonal and this is totally useless what to do the only uh, hope for for black actually is you know if magnus move the the rook and that could be some mating ideas of course is the queen is also moved so it's not so easy as the queen still uh, looking at c1 and and the, the rook as well so uh checkmate is still the idea somewhere in the air but it's not gonna happen uh, we have queen on e5 with check king on d8 and now queen h8 uh, king c7 now rook h7 so for now checkmate is coming the problem is black has to first move the king so we have king on c6 uh, queen on c3 with check king on d6 queen d4 king e6 and now after d takes on e4 Alexander Grishuk resigned the game and he resigned because Magnus Carlsen just see everything so d1 and g1 are controlled by by the queen okay so so there are no mating ideas here on the on the first rank but also a queen on d5 is coming and now look this queen could control everything uh, the rook also controls so the king would have only one move okay and after moving uh, the rook on uh, f7 is coming and that would be a checkmate with the queen on uh, on d5 so the only move what black could try to play is queen on g5 uh, but then this everything is forced so queen on b6 there is only one move now king e5 now queen c5 again uh, king f4 now queen c1 uh, king g4 queen g1 uh, king f4 rook f7 winning the queen or the bishop and and of course the game now just simply queen g5 uh, king g5 winning the bishop and the game so this is why in this position actually alexander grishuk resigned the game and i would like to also show you the the other games at least what happened on the board as you see day one round one magnus carlsen alexander grishuk won zero and then we have all other games there are not many draws as you see uh and now uh, feel free actually to pause the video and check the the the, the, the what's what just happening uh, and here we have uh, day one round two this is also uh, finished already uh, and now uh, round three uh, there are also uh, more draws this time but but as you see this also ended and now round four uh, this is round four if you have any suggestion which game would you like me to cover just leave in the comment section and uh, I'm, I'm gonna follow if it's some interesting games i i cannot follow all of them but yeah so uh that's all for this video and thanks for watching and see you in the next one